I'm Chief Investigator Brendan Keefe with Atlanta News First Investigates, and what we're looking at is the electors who met in Georgia on December 14th of 2020. What are electors? Well, this is the electoral college you always hear about. When you vote, you actually choose a candidate for president that you want to be president, but you're not actually voting for the president. You're voting for that candidate's slate of electors. And then those electors meet in the state capitals all across the country, and they cast their ballots for that candidate, their electors that the candidate has picked as their slate. This all sounds like inside baseball, and it usually is. We don't usually hear about this, but it's actually come to the fore in the January 6th investigation and in the investigation here in Georgia that Fonnie Willis, the district attorney for Fulton County, has been looking into. Because these electors that, remember, Joe Biden won Georgia narrowly and then once he did his slate of electors on December 14th were supposed to meet at the state capitol and cast ballots for Joe Biden which they did inside the general assembly at the state capitol they're supposed to do this at the state capitol it's required then what happens is they send those votes those ballots from the electors to Washington where they're opened by the vice president in front of the senate and they're tallied up and that is what happens on January 6 what was supposed to happen on January 6th. They opened the official ballots from the electors, they certified the election. But something else happened in 2020, and that has been the subject of a criminal investigation, more than one, federal, also state investigations. And that's because some Trump electors also met in the state capitol at the same time, not only here in Georgia, but also in Michigan, in Nevada, in Arizona. And what they did is these, again, were the Trump slate of electors. He didn't win those states. But what happens is the Trump electors cast their ballots for Donald Trump to be reelected as president. They signed a document certifying that they were the duly elected electors for that state. And then those ballots were sent to Washington, to the U.S. Senate, and also to the National Archives. And that detail is what's going to be critical in those other states, but not Georgia. And let me explain why. Fonnie Willis, the district attorney in Fulton County here in Georgia, gave immunity to some of those Trump electors. Now, you'll see in some media reports, people call them the fake electors, while of, uh, those on Donald Trump's side will call them the alternate electors. The defense, the argument is that these were essentially, uh, it was like a mulligan. It was a, it was a provisional, uh, like you'd say in golf, where they were doing this just in case Donald Trump prevailed in court what they could do is then take those electors ballots and then certify those ballots instead of the Joe Biden ones if Donald Trump was able to prove some level of fraud in Georgia or Michigan or Arizona or Nevada or these other states that were contested. And the reason that they said they needed those provisional ballots was that there are all of these deadlines along the way as part of the electoral college process that are codified in law and in the U.S. Constitution. And if those little deadlines aren't met, then you don't have a duly elected president. The other side is arguing, that would be the side saying that this was all a farce or even an illegal attempt to overthrow the results of the 2020 election by uh, Donald Trump and his supporters. They will say, no, these were fake electors. And the key point is that in these states, like Georgia, they certified we are the duly elected electors for the state of Georgia, and we are casting these official ballots. And they knew that wasn't the case because they were not the duly elected electors. Joe Biden's electors were the duly elected electors. And again, it sounds like inside baseball, but that's really important. If you're putting your name on something and saying something isn't true and then sending that document off to the federal government uh, to affect the outcome of an election, that could be a crime. And that's what Michigan determined. The Michigan attorney general actually went ahead and indicted some of the Trump electors saying they are fake electors and they committed a crime and they were going to be prosecuted, at least at this point. That is not going to happen for the vast majority of electors here in Georgia because District Attorney Fonnie Willis gave them that immunity. And that means she valued them more as witnesses than as defendants. Or she may have determined they didn't commit a crime and she just wanted their testimony. But in either case, those electors who were granted immunity will not be prosecuted by the District Attorney in Fulton County for sitting in the Capitol in Fulton County and attesting that they were the duly elected electors of the state of Georgia when they weren't. 
But that then raises the question, was Fonnie Willis trying to go for a bigger fish? The suggestion is that is the case because if you're going to give someone immunity, you're saying, you know what, this defendant isn't as important as whom they can testify against. And that would technically be Donald Trump, which obviously we know he has been the main target of Fannie Willis's investigation, but then there are also others, uh, and that's all we know that because of the grand jury report uh, that the former president has gone to great lengths to try to suppress. The Georgia Supreme Court uh, actually uh, ruled against Donald Trump trying to suppress that document, and that's how we ended up here where we are today and why we're looking at this fake electors issue, because fake electors or provisional electors or alternate electors, whatever you want to call them, they met on that same day in a different room in the state capitol, uh, technically following all the rules except where they attested to being the official elected electors for the state of Georgia, because that simply was not true. Be sure to check out more of our content on Atlanta News First Investigates and AtlantaNewsFirst.com as it relates to Fannie Willis's investigation and all of our investigations from Atlanta News First Investigates. I'm Chief Investigator Brennan Keefe.